Good morning everyone, we're down here at Jandicott, uh, like usual our, our little home away from home. Today we're going to take the Comanche 260B out for a spin up north. It's about 260 nautical miles northeast of Perth to a little place, a little bed and breakfast place called Gabion Station. Uh, this is Perrette's first time seeing the Comanche, let alone coming for a fly in it, so it's interesting to see what she thinks and uh, yeah, it should be a bit of fun. Come along. Yeehaw! <laughs> this is some goofy footage for future Will to edit. Welcome back, everyone. All right, Adis. 12865. Yeah, that's good. Visibility greater than All good. Alright. Perrette's got the weather on the iPad. 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 We'll shoot up past the lakes mine and then surface to 4,500. So it looks like we're going to be going around. Uh, insert, that'll keep us clear. All right, that's going to be our flight plan. So YPJ, Shop, CDM, MUE, TLMI, Wyckoff, and then Gabion. Zero Tango, Foxtrot, taxi and hold short, runway 06 left. Taxi and hold short, runway 06 left, Zero Tango, Foxtrot. I just wait. Tango, Foxtrot, traffic up into CT4, remaining in the circuit, clear for takeoff. Traffic inside, Zero, oh, clear for takeoff, Zero Tango, Foxtrot. Ah, well that's just lucky that we just happened to be on the right frequency before. For the ground call. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you, Oscar Julie, clear to land. The speed's alive. Fuel flow's good. Up the brakes. You're up. What's your um, climb speed in this plane? Uh, 96 is my. And um, we'll come back to 25. 25. Left, front, and right. So we're doing like 100 knots at 1,000 foot a minute. Right, so we can start climbing. Yeah, it's that, uh, that when you're outside the circle, when yeah. you can start climbing? Yep, above uh, 1,500, we can climb to 2,000 at the moment. And by the time we get to shops, we're good to 3,500. Shops will be the like, big squarish building just down there on your right. Yeah, I can't see it. There's no shops here. <laughs> Level off at about 2.5, and we'll see what this cloud's doing. That's few at 4,000. It's definitely lower at the moment. We'll sit at 3,000 and just skirt the bottom of the cloud for a while. It'll lift pretty shortly as we head slightly more north. A little bit bumpy as the handheld is a bit yeah. jumpy. Crazy like how high the hills are. Yeah, for Perth, eh? yeah. Like We think of it being so flat. But they do come up a couple of thousand, almost, what, 2,000? 1,500 feet, something? Yeah. Looks about 500 below us. We're, uh... Set up in cruise, just currently below the uh, cloud level. It should thin out in a little while, and I think at that case, I'll end up climbing up above it. Uh, the reason I'm not at the moment is that the freezing level is quite low. It's only at uh, four and a half thousand, so uh, this cloud is about three and a half thousand. So I um, obviously can sit on top of it as an VFR pilot, but I don't want to 
risk any icing conditions uh, near it or whilst trying to find a hole to get either above it or below it. Uh, well, some of the systems that I was going to tell you guys about. If Perrette grabs the camera... <laughs> Is that what Perrette will do? Or even use the GoPro. I don't mind. Never mind. I want to show the fuel system. So down here is the fuel system. So we have four tanks, two main inboards that hold just over 100 litres each, and then two auxiliaries that hold just over 50 litres each. Um, when the selectors pointed at them, that's obviously the tank we're using, and that will show the fuel in that tank. If we're to push one of these buttons on any one of the other tanks, that'll also show us the fuel on the one fuel gauge. So if you show us up here, for it. So that's currently showing the fuel level for the left auxiliary, which is what we're currently on. If I push the button for the left main, it's only a very slight drop. Actually barely noticeable, but that'll be showing the left main. If I let go of the button, <laughs> I'll have to show you that again later, but that, that's how you sort of check the fuel systems anyway. Um, cruise performance, we're sitting 20, what's that, about 2350. Uh, RPM, manifold pressures, 24, 23 and a half inches. That's giving us 62 litres per hour. Uh, and we're currently doing 140 indicated. That's giving us a TAS today of 153 knots. Um, so we've basically got no wind whatsoever. Our ground speed's 150 knots as well. Not too far off making a left turn. We sort of skirted out wide for some active military airspace at Pierce this morning. Yeah. I guess we haven't been doing too much flying lately. I uh, have. Yeah. <laughs> Perrette's actually... Um, well, you have too, but not recreational. <laughs> I, um, I finally picked up a job, a flying job, like something a little bit more substantial than the little bit of stuff at the drop zones that I was doing. Um, so I fly for a small company that does IT work for um, all the regional schools in Western Australia. And as part of that, I do some of the IT work, the um, network infrastructure work on the ground, and then also fly to these uh, schools. So these are, you know, what would normally be a, anywhere between uh, eight to 14 hour drive. We can do it a couple of hours in a plane and we cycle between, you know, three or four schools in the one day. And uh, yeah, that allows us to sort of get a lot more work done, which is quite good. Um, yeah, in the last, what, three and a half weeks, I think I've done just over, well, nearly 40 hours worth of flying. Um, it was almost covered the whole of Western Australia uh, twice over. Yeah, we've really covered some ground, including picking up new planes um, from Alice Springs. Uh, I've been very, very slowly doing my uh, RPL, but I'm in very initial stages of it so uh yeah i would i wouldn't call it really doing it but i have been actually flying from the left hand seat recently a little bit so that's that's exciting yeah well, you're only what uh an hour or two off your first solo really who knows these circuits they're just impossible they're so hard the hardest thing ever <laughs> So you're only a couple of hours off uh, your first solo, which is pretty awesome. And then you can get out there and do some solo circuits. Um, I would feel so lonely in a plane. No, I don't know. I think when I started it, I never really thought about that I would have to be in the plane alone. Like I always, I don't know, because we always fly with you or it's with someone. So the idea of doing the solo flying is a little bit intimidating. I'm like, I have no one to talk to. <laughs> that would be so weird. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I think I think all pilots go through it, you know, to varying degrees. Um, what is this autopilot doing? The, uh, the autopilot in this aircraft. It, it's just an older autopilot. I probably should just put it on heading mode, but in nav mode it seems to wander a little bit. It'll, it'll get... Uh, not much, you know, with, within a mile off track, and then all of a sudden it makes a big bank like that. Um, Gets back on track and then does another really aggressive turn back. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It it um it does maintain altitude really well, so, but uh, if it starts doing it a few more times, I think I'll just put it in heading mode and uh, point and shoot. You've got about an hour and ten minutes of uh, cruising along here, skirting the clouds. 
will uh, bring you guys back if I decide to do anything different. Otherwise, uh, yeah, sit back, enjoy the scenery, and we'll see you as we get to the station. Um, we've discovered that our autopilot's potentially drunk today. We've experienced all sorts of funny flying whilst observing the autopilot do its thing. Uh, but we're basically about 10 minutes out now, so I'm starting to descend, sort of, kind of. What's yeah, what are we, uh, 25 miles now? Basically, almost direct south of the field, 4,500. 2,100 is circuit. Doing a left-hand circuit, so you can, uh, where, where's the, um, homestead, which side of the airfield? Uh, is the northern side. Northern side. So you're going to overfly the airfield. Yep, so we'll aim for a midfield crosswind. We'll just drop down to circuit al uh, altitude. Uh, we'll be able to just confirm what the wind's doing. We have a pretty good idea because we can sort of tell from a strip that's not far away. And then we'll make a left turn to join downwind. Funny, there's no like great way to like... The Cessna, you can kind of like rest your arm here, but these co control columns are so far forward that they are like super comfy in cruise, at least for me. I probably could put my seat further back, I suppose, but... So what's the landing speed uh, VREF, so over the numbers, effectively, we want to be 76. Okay, so quite, quite like, a little bit more than a Cessna, but similar. Uh, yeah, I mean, what's it's about... What do you aim to be over the numbers in your 172? Uh, 65, 65 yeah. 70. Yep. So it's like flapless. That's flapless. 70, 70 yeah, yeah. 75. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, short finals, 80. Okay. Uh, base, uh, 90, somewhere there. Okay, so a bit, a bit faster than a flapless 172. Yeah, a little bit. Alright, so we're starting to descend. Tom 1, talking and squawking. Gabion Station, Sierra Tango Foxtrot, Comanche is 10 miles to the south, 4,500 descending, 2,100 with a circuit time 03. Gabion Station. I think I already see the strip. Yeah, the gravel bit there. Yep, yeah. which makes sense, so that'll be 16 back towards us. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll swing out to the left a little bit. So there's the a nice main road off our left here that's running east-west. Uh, sorry, that is, yeah, east-west, um, which was a nice lead-in feature. I thought it was, uh, I don't want to jinx it, but I thought it was going to be bumpier down here. Don't jinx it. <laughs> 2,100 for 1,100. We've got runway 1-6. 1100 meters. And we're on 1267. Keeping an ear out for anyone else. Yeah, you're basically, with this landing direction, overflying it anyway on approach. Yeah, close enough. I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll hear us. Uh, we'll bring the mis rest of the mixture back in. Oh, <laughs> it's very hard to film. Like, drunk video. I'm sorry. I'm s <laughs> Sorry for people watching, and I'm sorry for Will for editing this. <laughs> Makes it hard when it's um, bumpy like this, doesn't it? Yep. Camera don't know what to film at all. Alright, we're below our gear operating speed. 
Feel some drag from here coming down. Oh, yeah. We have a green light, and I felt the drag. That's about all we can check in this aircraft. We'll get first stage of flap in. Help us get slowed down. Where was the windsock here? Can you see it? I do not. Gabby and traffic, Sierra Tango Foxtrot turning downwind, runway 16, full stop, Gabby and station. Yeah, we have a tailwind here for sure. So, brakes, I've got pressure, undercarriage is down and indicating, mixtures all the way forward. Flaps, I've got the first stage in, we'll throw the second stage in on base. Instruments, all look good, we're happy with runway heading. Switches, I'm not going to put landing lights on out here. Harnesses, we're both secure. Right, we're looking for about 90 knots. Alright, second stage of flap is in. Alright, puff. Pitch all the way forward, undercarriage, green, third check, down and indicating. Flaps are landing. Fuel, we're on the fullest tank. As it always alerts for terrain. Yeah, just because this is in an airport that's in the terrain database, so as far as it thinks, we're just landing in a paddock, so it's saying terrain. Okay. All right, so we're holding about 80 knots. Short final. A little bit of sink. Cars driving to the airport. On the edge of the runway. Uh, not my absolute prettiest, but it was alright. You go. I <laughs> think that was okay. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I mean, I'll take it. Uh, this is the windstock that doesn't work, by the way. Oh. Park at the northern end. Here, I suppose, eh? Hey? Yeah. Well, it parks here. So don't go maybe too far. Well, we, we made it. We're here. The runway was absolutely beautiful. It's um, freshly graded. I think we just about had the only tire marks on it. Um, it's a pretty solid little bit of wind we just had there. Um, probably the videos never do it justice, I guess, but it was all right. I haven't landed that plane in oh, longer than I probably want to admit to Perret, <laughs> but uh, it wasn't too bad. Alan came out on the four-wheeler and met us and he's just taken our bags and is uh, taking them back over to the, to the Shearer's quarters. Yes. That's where we're staying tonight. Yep. But um, otherwise, welcome to this little bit of a, what do you say, Australian paradise, Gabion Station. Damn, this place is so pretty. This time of year, everything's still really green. Must be 12, maybe 14 degrees currently with that wind chill. Not a cloud in the sky. We've got away from all that stuff in Perth and we should have uh, three or four days now of blue sky. Be cold night, so I'd say the nights are gonna get down close to zero. Come in. Yes. There's skylights, which is pretty cool. I don't That's think we have good. a wall with the neighbor, but I don't think we have a neighbor anyway. So all good. That's what it's about, isn't it? Oh, it's super cool. Yeah. Very the building cool. itself is pretty cool. The uh, communal camp kitchen. Beautiful, beautiful old, well, this building's been done up a little bit, but um, beautiful old original buildings. I have a pan and I'm 
ready to go. <laughs> this is uh, just like the oven you grew up with, hey Perrette? Um, this is actually a little bit more elaborate than the oven I grew up with. So we actually had to go and borrow a, um, a lighter. There was no matches or lighter in here. First uh, issue. So if you come here, make sure you bring your own one. <laughs> Are we going to go see the horses? Oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? How friendly are they? Hello. Got our uh, couple of glasses of wine, the fire going, some marshmallows and biscuits, and uh, I think we're going to settle in for the night and uh, relax and watch the sun go down. Yeah.